praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on and re re rejoice and be glad to be in it. We serve an awesome God. This is your day for a miracle. Come on. This is your season for miracles. This is your day season your your weeks your months we just, just receive it right now lord i thank you because this is my season for miracles this is my season for breakthroughs this is my season for transformation hallelujah we are getting back what the enemy has stolen and we're getting it back with interest glory to god saints hello each and every one of you we have a very special 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 broadcast today and i have my dear friend we love him so much you know brother Bo, and how the lord uses him in a mighty way and saints let me tell you something i'm going back i was this morning i was at the mountains whoa oh my god even brother Bo didn't even know about this praying over the prayer request Saints, I am telling you, it was glory. I'm just going to be honest. It was glorious being there. It was glorious. I'm telling you, just spending time with the Lord. It was just glorious. And, you know, I am, I, I, I got to go back. I feel the urge of going back because there was mountain movings. I, I felt it. I felt the power and the presence of God. There's a special place in the mountains. I mean, it's high. It's like, I would say 4,000. Uh, it's up there. It's it's high. And I was, I just felt breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. As I was up there, I didn't want to leave. Saints, I didn't want to leave. That's the power of God. That's why we have to continue to send in your prayer request. Mail it in. Mail it in. I took hundreds, hundreds of photos. I took thousands of prayer requests. Very powerful very very powerful and so and just something is just it's just something is i i can't explain it when i go there i mean everybody has their their net their net and i and i'm gonna tell brother boy about this it's powerful everybody has her net in amanda likes she wears her her shawl but for some reason when i'm in the mountains early in the morning and i put that prayer shawl on and i'm praying it's so it, it is so powerful so i didn't want to leave but i'm gonna go back in, in 10 days i'm going back and i'm taking those prayer requests and i'm praying over it and i'm gonna i'm going to anoint them with 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 that oil with that oil that oil that hasn't been running out. <laughs> I'm going to anoint them. So those that haven't sent their photos, send them. Go to our website, get the address. And those of you that have been sending in, sowing seed in our ministry, thank you. Many of you are sending your prayer requests and you're, and, and you're sowing a seed, you know, blessing our ministry so we can continue to get the gospel out because of ministry expenses that we do. Thank you for, for honoring the Lord in your, in your sowing. Thank you for honoring the Lord, sending your, 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 your photos. Thank you. Believe me, something shifted today. And, and um, I, I, there was no signals. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring brother Bo on, but there, there was, there was, I could not get a signal brother Bo on those mountains. So, I, I, I was only able to film some of the things. So I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. G uh, glory to God. How you doing, Brother Bo? <laughs> Hallelujah. I am well. Thank you, Manny. God I don't know bless you. you, your wife. Thanks for having me back. And uh, what a blessed time we're living in. Yes, yes. I, I don't 
And uh, um, we, regarding the situation with the mountains, I took thousands, I'm literally thousands, of prayer requests yeah. that this, these wonderful saints have been sending in. And I um, took hundreds of photos. I saw this week, I saw so many photos. And, and Brother Bo, we have, and so I, we, we, we brought them in, and we brought them into the miracle wall. We have a miracle wall in our studio. It's a miracle wall. And I blasted, we blasted that wall with, uh, with the photos of the saints that they sent in. You know, you That's can see awesome. it right there. Fantastic. Yeah. That's beautiful. Wow. Yeah. And they were being sent in all over the United States. In parts of different worlds. There's a miracle wall. And we were laying hands on them. And just speaking God. And for hours and hours and hours. They were being soaked into. Um, in that studio. The word of God. Salvation. Healing. Uh, uh, financial restoration. It was just. Literally hours. Those photos were being soaked. We took them down. And we put them all together. And we took them to the mountains this morning. So, I mean, it, it, it was, and literally, I felt the power of God. And so we lost, I didn't get the signal I wanted, but I was able to film some of the view from the mountains that we were at praying. And so, um, let's see, I'll, I'll let you get a, a part of that. I want the saints to be able to see this. So, uh, these were, this is California. So everybody says things, but I'm telling you something. This, there's a lot of beauty in California too. And, and so we were, uh, these were areas. The elevation was over 4,000. That's pretty high. And, and so it's areas, it's different areas. And that wasn't the location. That's just part of it. I had to go higher up. And so I'm going to go and I'm going to show you a higher, even higher. Because I had to go higher up. God wanted me to go higher. See, I said, now I'm higher now. I'm even higher now. Yes. So, uh, and, and, and brother, Bo, you're, I'm like, you're like you, Moses, you're like Moses up there. Yeah, I'm, I'm high. God would, he said, go higher, go higher, go higher. I mean, and so it was pretty powerful, Saints. And uh, it's um, it's California's version of Mount Sinai. Yeah, it it, <laughs> it it was very powerful. And I was, I mean, I didn't want to leave, Saints. I'm telling you, I didn't want to leave. Well, the think about what happened. God, what, did Pharaoh, what did what did Moses say to Pharaoh? Let my people go. Let my people so go. they can go into the wilderness. Mm. and worship me very mm. simple it's that simple there was when in a godly kingdom in a, in a god's kingdom you have more than everything you need so you're not chasing anything mm. all he wants you to do is worship him so what were you doing that's up right there? you're worshiping god because why that's what we're supposed to do satan got on the earth stole our inheritance now we got to go work for satan to pay him back to buy back little pieces of what he stole from us Mm. But that's exactly what happened at the time of um, Israel and Pharaoh. You know, now this is, that was a area of the world. Now we're stepping into a worldwide phenomenon, a worldwide exodus. Let my people go. Mm. I, 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 I receive that. I totally receive it. I totally receive that. You know, we are in a situation where we're going to see such a huge move of yes. the Lord, you know, like you wouldn't believe. That's the thing and, is no one understands what's coming. I don't understand what's coming. Like no one really does because this is supposed to be one of the greatest moves of God's spirit in the history of the world. So what does that mean? I'm just waiting and watching because no one knows how this is going to go down. 
Because if God revealed it at the Red Sea, Pharaoh wouldn't have gone in. Hmm. So this is yeah, historic, what's about to happen, because it looks horrible. Everything looks like evil's in control and winning. You know, the, you just look, turn the TV on, you know, the indictments. It just, it just goes on and on about what's what they're doing. You know, look what happened in Maui. It just, everywhere you look, it's just like evil's, they're in control. They're, they're running everything. Everyone's bought and paid for. And then God showed up. That's right. And 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 uh, it was actually uh, I I love this you know definition because as evil as these people are, they're working for a, a, an evil foe. They're working for Satan, who number one doesn't care about them. He just wants them to work for him because he wants them to not be with God. So these Ooh. evil ones that are doing this stuff, it would it's so sad that they don't really realize that they're working for Satan, who Ooh. doesn't care about them. He just wants that's it. That's it. He wants them to do their will on this earth. So they so they're this, this global elite of these powerful people. You know, they walk around with all these chips on their shoulder. They think they're so thus and so because they are the controllers of, you know, they've they've bowed down and they've now kings on the earth, and they're so powerful. Mm. And yet the one that made them a king on the earth will discard them in a heartbeat. He doesn't care about them. And that's the sad part where God actually wants the even these evil ones, you know, they're working for saying, you know, turn from a wayward sheep, turn from your wicked ways. And he gave them three and a half years to turn. But most are so, you know, pride is horrific and arrogance, you know, pride and arrogance, boy, those are the downfall of civilization. And they walk around with chips on their shoulders, such pride. They rule this earth, you know, the earth is theirs. And yet it's not. The earth is God's first goal. <laughs> and they're about to find out that fact. And they're, when they find out, Satan, who basically elevated them to this, to this status on the world, is going to spit them out like you don't even imagine. They can't even imagine. He will not care about them for a second because oh, Satan man. only cares about who? Himself. Himself. So himself. But, you know, uh, Brother Bo, you couldn't have said it any better. You couldn't have said it any better. You know, many of you have heard me say this, but I like saying it. We're on the side that wins. Yeah. Uh -uh. I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to open up the chat line there and speak it out. Come on. These are glory days. Come on. Glory for the saints. These are glory days for the saints. Yeah. The days of, of gloomy for the wicked, it's upon them. This, they and, don't know it. Right. And when God intervenes, this is going to be a, a both of what you just referenced. It's going to be glory days. And what is mm -hmm. glory days? It's going to be the greatest time to ever be alive. Amen. Because the latter rain is about, well, the latter rain's birth, but we're about to see the manifestation of the birth of God's kingdom. So it's going to be the greatest time you've ever, ever um, could imagine. And then it'll be multiples greater than that because we can't even imagine how great God's going to make all this stuff. Like you Ooh. don't even know how great this is going to turn out because we've never been there before. It's just mm -hmm. going to be beyond what we can even comprehend, number one. But it's so that'll be the greatest time you've, to be alive. That's in right. the worst time to be alive for them. You see, so it's the best of times, as that one saying, you know, the best of times in the worst of times. Mm. It all depends on what seed you've sown. Because Come on. Come on. what is what is the same that things Galatians, right? Be not deceived, for God is not mocked. Mocked. For whatever a man soweth. Okay, so when do you when do you reap a harvest? And when? The springtime? No, in the fall. So you reap what you have sown. So the har it's we're coming into harvest in November here. Mm. So something's going to go down. We are at an incredibly important point in time 
Uh, this weekend is the completion of the 10 Days of Awe. And Ooh. this weekend on the 25th of September, which I think, what is that, Sunday, I think? Yeah, so Sunday or Monday. So Monday is the 25th, the holiest day of not my year, not your year, mm -hmm. because who wrote time? God. So we are just stewards using God's time, who he's given to us to understand. And all I know is that this Monday is a very important time point for God. Come Why? On. It's the last day of the 10 days of awe. When you read Leviticus 25, 9 through 10, it says, and we should all be doing this Sunday and Monday. I hope saints that are out there that are listening to this podcast, please, you know, I'm going to be doing my wife. When Monday hits, you get that show far out because Monday, it states, sound the trumpet on Yom Kippur. That is the 25th. That's this Monday. And proclaim this Monday is this, this Monday, Monday is actually sound the trumpet is the holiest day of the year. And it's Leviticus 25, 9 through 10 states. Sound the trumpet on Yom Kippur, which this year is September 25. And here it is. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land. It shall be a jubilee. God is telling us we are in historic times because this is 50 years from Roe v. Wade. This is 50 years from the petrodollar contract with Saudi Arabia. This mm. is 50 years specifically what's well, written in Leviticus. And so all I know is that when I read the word, the word says, trust the word. Mm -hmm. It is written. That's what it says. It is written. And so all I know is that between now, this Monday, the 25th, and to the end of the year, forget about it, evil. You're done. Mm. Because mm. the year January starts year 51. And Leviticus said consecrate what year? The 51st? No, the 50th. Yeah. And proclaim what throughout the land? Liberty. Mm. The restoration of the United States. Evils about to witness or experience the hand of God. I receive that. Wow. It's interesting. A uh, um, pastor, um, uh, the pastor from Canada that specifically you know, called them out. And what did he state? You know, he had a prophetic vision. Um, and what did God show him? He showed all these people sitting on a fence. And as far as you could see, there's people sitting on a fence. And when the glory manifests, his hands showed up and the hands started shaking that fence. And when the glory was done shaking the fence, there was no one left sitting on the fence. They're either on one side or the other. And you started off this podcast with going up to the mountains. Mm -hmm. What did Joshua, and when Moses came down with Joshua, what did Joshua say to everybody, to the Israelites? Visualize the fence. God just finished shaking at the fence. What did Joshua say? Choose this day whom you, you will serve. serve. Wow. Woo. Well, you know, the best way to say this is that uh, you, I'm going to be on Monday, you know, on the cruise event with Donna Rickney. Um, but that's a good thing now. I didn't realize that Monday was the day of shofar blowing. Okay, I need to talk with Donna to see what, what, we, what we can do because we're having an event every night on that ship or nearly yep. every night. 
Mm -hmm. And I really want to bring that in on the event because this is huge. I want to tell the saints what, how do I say this? There was like a lot of open doors that was shut on that mountain as I was praying, I can sense there was a lot of open doors that needed to be open. A lot of doors that the enemy has hindered or shut or tried to keep from opening a God that God has ordained. It was like angels was I looked up as I was praying and I could, you know, I'm not trying to get super religious, but. No, you don't want to be religion because that's, <laughs> that's mad. <man> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, don't want to do that. Let's just I love Jesus. I just want to love Jesus. But I'm telling you, those clouds look like when I was going up the mountains, they were just normal looking clouds. But. After I was been praying for a while, all of a sudden, some of the clouds were formating or looked like they were formating into ang angelics. And I took a photo of it. So next time on my next broadcast, I'm going to download that photo. And I took a photo of it. And I go, wait a minute. These are things that can't curse <laughs> angels forming in, in the clouds. I've never seen that before, but it looks like I'm seeing it right now. And it was lots of them right after I'm praying. I'm like, where did all this come from? And I could see that there were doors that were being open. These were supernatural doors, saints, to give you an idea of it. It was, it was something like this, Brother Bo. This mm -hmm. is the, what I saw, just doors supernatural doors that that the saints needed to go through there is going to be such an acceleration of the enemy falling falling everywhere you go how did how did the enemy build his dominion on earth how did the enemy build mystery babylon mm. see in order for the enemy to fall how he built it must be destroyed right and so the enemy rose to power and is and now controls all facets and aspects of our life mm. and so i listened to um actually i think i was on a plane just yesterday or two days ago and i saw you did a podcast and you were discussing uh the month of october Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, and it's, and it's interesting because, um, you're right. See, like your prophetic words, yeah, that's what I love, you know, like, I gotta tell you, you know, I listen to you as much as I like to speak to you, Manny, uh, mm -hmm. God has, God has blessed you because, you know, the, the, the words, you know, when, when you, when you, the, the written word that you get, you know, that's from God, because when God mm -hmm. speaks, you know, your word that you gave the other day about October and things that are coming, you're right. Like, I don't see anything horrific happening in the markets in October. And, and so that word was true. Mm -hmm. But the, the point to understand is the financial system is not about the markets specifically. Right. It's about the dollar. And everything that they use, it's just like they use, it's called hush money, right? And so if someone gave person X a million dollars to be quiet, and the, every year gives them a million dollars to be quiet, then, you know, the, the, the quietness remains. You don't ever hear what the hush was, you know, what the secrets were. And so evil is operating in, the, in, in quiet, in, in their secret societies, and they're paying everybody off with money that they're creating out of thin air. Mm. So we're about to see a historic event because one of the reasons that you and I came together you know, two, three years ago 
was specifically about because you are one of the prophets that forever has been talking about kingdom finance. Yes, yes. And very few yes. prophets three years ago wanted to even touch that topic. Think about it, right? Remember like three years ago? I've always been talking about precious metals, God's money, and that, and it's like the prophets didn't even want to touch that topic. You know, it's like, oh, we don't want to talk about money. You know, it's not money. It's just kingdom finance, right? And man, he's always been talking about kingdom finance because it's all over the Bible, right? Deuteronomy, it says every Haggai 2, verse 8, you know, we're to be the head, not the tail. So all of this is, you know, and so evil's basically now all these prophets across the world now in the past few months almost every one of them is talking finance they're all talking wealth transfer right but three four years ago man well it was like me and you like we were the only ones talking about this stuff well, you know i i, I really simply believe that they they have uh i really believe many of them had got it from watching us because i noticed that when somebody was sending me a link oh this person is saying what you're saying but they're using the same language I'm using or the same language you will be using. It's like, oh, come on. You know, you, you've watched us and now you're bearing witness with it. Right. And, and it's and it's great because I love I love the bear witnesses is the fact because, you know, the, the truth is in two or more witnesses, you know. So now we're bear witness and all this stuff. And so the point I'm trying to make is everything that you and I have been speaking about, you know, over the past many years now was the truth. And the bottom line is until the financial system, I don't mean stock market, I mean the financial system of how they transact and how they basically bought and paid off everybody changes, nothing is going to change. And so mystery Babylon today exists because they have the ability to create money out of thin air to infinity. And why? Because of Leviticus time point, we can go backtrack that to 73 when they created the petrodollar contract. Petrodollar contract, so the US dollar was backed by petro, you know, by oil. And it's been now 50 years. And as of last August, the Saudis, who we have a petrodollar contract with, you're gonna you're gonna find this entertaining. But so the US dollar is the petrodollar. But as of August of this past year, it's 50 years to the exact mark, the Saudis joined the BRICS. So now it's just the dollar. There's no more petro. I get it? There's no more petro in the dollar. It's just paper. What does the Bible say about what fire does to test what with fire? Test everything with fire. Mm -hmm. Right? Right? Test, test a paper dollar system with fire. Good luck. So God is about to test their financial system with his fire. And we're going to see the collapse because it's going to burn. And Babylon is going to burn. Their financial system is going to burn up. And this will be the flipping of the financial scales like what happened to Belshazzar. Many, many tackle offshore seen the writing on the wall. So their financial system was about to crumble, and that will be the fall of Babylon, which will mark directly with what's written on your hat, glory days. So when gold and we, when we're about to watch gold and silver leap vertical, those that control the financial system suddenly lost control. Why? Not by their choice. Oh, I promise you that. Not by their choice. They suddenly lost control when silver and gold leap vertical. What's written on Manny's hat for years now, will that's will be the beginning of the birth of God's kingdom. And that starts off glory days for the righteous and gloomy right. days for the, wicked. for the wicked. So I wanted to kind of give everybody an understanding of how this is about to play out here. I'm in celebration mode. So what's, the holy, so what's the holiest day of the year? Yom Kippur, September 25. Does something happen? Mm. I don't know. Because God's not revealing certain things to anybody. He's told him, he's spoken to many prophets, wealth transfer. He's spoken to many prophets that he's about to move upon this earth. He's spoken to many prophets, very similar things, including yourself. So there's so much agreement among the prophets right now. 
but no one knows how this is going to potentially go down the day it's going to go down as well because it's all this is that kill shot at the where red sea where god is not going to tell everybody how this is all going to play out because evil has no counter to what's about to go down evil cannot stop it there's nothing that can stop what's about to happen because god's lined up all the stars and every all the characters and every all the players on this earth for a kill shot that's coming and it's going to be incredible how this is all about to go down and i find it fascinating that you know we're in the feasts right now coming into the holiest day of the year and i don't know if you have um haggai 2 verse 10 if oh, cool. uh, you you can pop that up on the screen if it's possible for you but haggai 2 verse 10 it states so the holiest day of the year is september 25 and then Haggai 2 verse 10 says something rather interesting it says on the 24th day of the ninth month the day before so does something start this Sunday I don't know I'm just doing the math and the math says when you study Hag when you study the math it says that Leviticus counts 50 years. If you count 50 years from Roe v. Wade, it's now. If you count 50 years from the petrodollar contract, it's now. If, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then what will God do? Heal our land. Second Chronicles. So when you put all the pieces together, all I know is that the pieces are saying, these biblical scriptures are all telling us that we should expect the restoration and the healing of our land in what? The 50th year based on Leviticus. So Haggai 2 verse 10 states, on the 24th day of the ninth month, the fig tree, the pomegranate tree, and the olive tree have yielded nothing. But from this day forward, I will bless you. The next day is the holiest day of the year, Yom Kippur. Mm. All I know is that next week could be really interesting. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. We wait and watch how it plays out. If it plays out, I don't know. But my, my, all I know is that God has been watching and waiting. And we've done what we were supposed to do, Manuel. We've That's turned right. our right. wicked ways. We overturned Roe v. Wade. Actually, when I was with Donna, she did a very beautiful description of that. See, so if this is the earth... I think you will like this, this this description here. This is the earth. When we made a covenant with God, he put his hand on the United States and the earth. And no, evil couldn't touch it. And then what happened was when we allowed the killing of his creation with Roe v. Wade, this, an evil snuck in. Mm. And now we've overturned it. Our God's hand is now upon the United States. So we wait and watch how this plays out. But I do know that something huge, biblical, is coming. So we wait and watch and uh, listen to what you know God is saying through his prophets and what is God is saying through you. And you've, you've been very adamantly clear that God will not be mocked. God will not be mocked. Saints... I'm going to explain. I don't think I've explained this to you as I and with Bo on here. The wealth transfer is based off scripture from Genesis to Revelation. As I study the scriptures, not just read them, because I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to just have knowledge. I also want to have wisdom. Because not a lot of people have knowledge. The scripture says in the book of Daniel that the knowledge of God is going to increase. But we don't see much wisdom behind it. I can have a knowledge of the gun, but if I don't have wisdom on when or when it should be used, I'm in trouble. I have knowledge of fire, but wisdom will say, don't put your hand on, on top of it. So in all you do, you get wisdom. So I've studied the scriptures. And I study Solomon. I really study Solomon, brother, brother Bo, the Proverbs. 
and I studied Ecclesiastes. What was worse, what was worse, worse will be again. So I right. understand things, things work in a cycle circle. The earth's a circle, it's around. Heaven, I've seen heaven. It's a it's a planet. It's, it, it looks like a galaxy. That's how big it is, but it's round. Heaven is round. Wait till you see it. So <clears> things <throat> circle itself, but in different generations. And as it circle itself, the enemy tries to do that and God pushes back because God has generals, remnants in every generation. And so we're at that tipping. We're on the tipping now, the tipping now. Well, evil starts to come and tries to advance. Satan always likes to counteract God's plans and advance his plans and exalt his plans above God. That's why Apostle Paul makes it very clear that you don't, that when you get these thoughts that exalt yourself before God, you bring them down, you cast them down. You don't cast them down by your own strength. There are angelics, there are, uh, uh, God gives you help. You cast those thoughts down that tries to exalt itself beyond God's plans. That's why you see, well, everybody doesn't see it. I had a chance to see it last week. The spiritual warfare that was taking place in the atmosphere once in a while, God would show me a little bit. It's not something that I desire to see all the time. And what I saw was the uh, heavy duty warfare. There were warfares all, all over the world, spiritual warfare. But Brother Bo, the warfare over the United States was huge. It was bigger than the warfare you see in Ukraine and Russia. It but was me, and to pause you for a minute, why? Because if you grab the United States, you grab the world. Continue. Thank you. Thank you. The warfare was bigger around the United States than any parts of the world right now. It was huge. And I showed it last week. I'll show it this week. The saints... What was going on in 2020 is different now. The saints are now in 2023, what we're living in. You guys are praying. It, you guys are seriously praying. Because what I saw in 2020 was different from what I'm seeing now. Now I'm seeing up to prevailing, a prevailing of our prayers. It's working. The, the the demonic forces are falling. They're literally falling to the ground. So I am seeing this and I'm excited. I go, the saints are in the position. The saints are praying. They're not walking in fear. They're not walking in, in doubt. They're, 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 they're moving forward. They've gotten their marching orders. And the Lord says, now I'm going to advance my plans. Get ready. Get ready. So it is a fierce warfare, but we are winning. And I'm telling you, don't stop. You said it, Brother Bo. What, what happens right now, God has raised up our nation. Our nation. Because no matter what you're seeing, we're still the most powerful nation in the world. God has done this. God has done this. But in and 20... God is going to... But also in 2016, you see Obama started messing with the United States because he let transgenders into the military. And that started weakening the military, right? See, China is the snake, right? Mm. And from a biblical perspective, and they want to control the world. And so their agenda, and they know they never can come in and grab the United States. It's not possible. The United States is too much of a superpower. So the only way that they can come in and get the United States is to subvert it, to come in under the shadows. Mm. And that's what they've done. So they've come in and now they bring, and then Obama brings in the transgenders. Now I know that a lot of generals and military people are leaving the army. All the, all the guys that made, you know, this powerful nation, powerful army, they all want out. Many, many want out now because they're just, because the laws that they're putting or the, um, ordinances they're putting into the military um, are real, truly kind of, you know, disgusting, you know, of, of what they're right, allowing. Right. And so many of these so-called tough guys, you know, the, the men, 
that that a control, you know, that been make up this powerful military are leaving. This is a fact, a fact that's happening right now. So they're so they're trying to weaken the United States militarily. So then what? So then the dragon can come in and grab the United States mm -hmm. and thus control the world. The dragon, China, is comparable to Pharaoh. What happened when God showed up to Pharaoh? Mm -hmm. After Moses and the Red Sea closed, China, uh, Pharaoh, Egypt was never, ever a superpower of the world and to this day ever again. That's right. So mark my words, okay? China is coming. So, the you know, the dragon is rising no different than Pharaoh. They think they control, they can, or they're about to control the world and enslave everybody and bring on their social credit score system. And everything they're trying to do is no different than complete control of what Pharaoh had, Pharaoh had across the world right before God showed up and then the Red Sea miracle occurred. Yeah. And so after the Red Sea miracle, the United States will, let's just leave it at this, on the other side of the Red Sea, Every nation that ever came up against Israel again feared the God of Israel. Mm. Mark my words, after God intervenes, every nation of this world will fear the God of the United States, Jesus Christ, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit. It's going to be awesome how this is about to go down. But, you, but the characters are different. But the plans are no different of what was going on then and now. Wow. You know what, saints? There is a shaking going on in hell. They are very, very disturbed because they've been trying to shut up God's people. They've been trying to shut up the prophets. How do we shut these prophets up? Well, let's bring somebody in and bring division to come, you know, to say this or that. Who are who are God's people, right? Mm -hmm. Well, how does evil look at us? Very simple. Two words. We are a sleeping giant. Mm. Mm. I'm going to say this much. God is doing an awakening. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. The prophets that God has called, known and unknown prophets, that God has called is not going to shut them we're going to advance even more we're going to advance even more and we're going to speak that word we're going to speak that word saints you get ready because it is making a difference and i'm here to encourage every saint here do not stop your prayers are working we are advancing. Brother Bo, you're advancing. I'm advancing. We are part of the army of God. I'm not talking about the United States Army. That's great. But you and I are part of the army of God. And our prayers are, I don't know how, how deep I can say this, but our prayers are working. We are advancing and they and just just keep it up. Just keep it up and stand. As Ephesians says, at the end of the day, stand. At the end of the day, stand. When you open your eyes, what are you going to see? What are you going to see? The enemy has fallen. The enemy's plans has 
came to nothing. You know, Bo made something, he made a statement last time he was on behind the scenes that it has to get uglier before it gets better. We see that in the scriptures, as I was talking earlier regarding wealth transfer. God doesn't just want to bring the devil down. He wants to strip him of his goods because those goods was rightfully ours. When you and I study the scriptures, and Bo, you, you can testify to this. Whenever David, Joshua, Hezekiah, all their kings, whenever they defeated the enemy, they were always what? Stripped them of the spoils. That was a wealth transfer. Jehoshaphat, wealth transfer. Josh, Joshua, wealth transfer. Moses out of Egypt, wealth transfer. Jacob leaving his father-in-law, wealth transfer. We always see it. Wealth transfer. The days of Elijah, wealth transfer. Always read about the kings of Israel when they submitted to the Lord. And they came against their enemy. And God helped them defeat their enemy. After the defeat, there was a wealth transfer. The spoils belong to the saints. It's in the Bible. That's the way of the kingdom. Evil so, takes the money. Evil takes yes. the money and tries to impoverish you. Because if you're impoverished, then he who has the money controls you. It's always about a control system. And that's why whenever all those examples that you've illustrated within the Bible, there's always a wealth transfer because why? God will strip the money of those in control and give it to those that it was stolen from. Now, I want you to say it, saints. Make a declaration. The spoils belongs to the saints. That's you and me. Jesus said in the word, you know, the scripture says it. He says, I, the, the righteous will inherit the earth. Woo! So, Scripturally, I want to give you, there's, here's a few scriptures that I pulled up and, and, you know, drafted. I've got a few scriptures for you. This is all about the land, right? So when you read Second Chronicles, it says, if my children call my, by my name, humble themselves and seek my face and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, restore their, uh, forgive their sins and heal their land. So if Second Chronicles is about to manifest, because again, we've turned from our wicked ways. So let's, what does Psalm 37, 9 say? Mm. For the evildoers shall be cut off, but those who have waited for the Lord shall inherit the land. The, uh, yes. Wow. Psalm 37, 11, but the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace. Mm. Psalm 37, 22, for, the, for those blessed by the Lord shall, again, here it is, inherit the land, mm. but those cursed by him shall be cut off. Mm. Psalm 37, 22, again, the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell upon it forever. Psalm 37, verse 34, wait for the Lord and keep his ways. He will exalt you to inherit the land. You see, it's always a restoration of the land that was Come stolen on. from us. See, evil came on the earth, stole our inheritance. And what are they trying to do right now? Evil's trying to do one simple thing. It's so obvious. Steal the United States. They need to get rid of the Constitution and grab the United States. If they fully grab and capture the United States, then you get the one world system. So what stands between the one world system and their, their, their plans is the United States. It's always stood in the way. I love it. It's That's always good. stood That's in the good. way, you know, uh, you know, 45 is stated, you know, they're after you. Well, they're after us, but they're also after the earth. They're after everything, not just mm. us. They're after everything. They want it all. Mm. They want the earth. They want it all. But the earth is whose footstool? 
the Lord's saints understand this. God always has his remnants. That's why I'm always excited about the things of God. I'm excited about the, that that the Lord didn't make a mistake. So um, we can't enjoy things here on earth if we're in bondage. What does the scripture says in the New Testament? You know, it depends on the translation. I wish of all things, or I, I pray of all things, that you would what? Prosper, be in good health as what? As your soul prospers in Christ Jesus. This is important. You know, good health is good. I want good health. I want to prosper in the kingdom of God. I want my soul to prosper in the word of God. God wants that for us. Jesus, you know, I don't just quote Old Testament. I'll quote New Testament. Jesus said, I wish that you would have life and more abundantly. But with this, with, with, with what the boat just said earlier. While the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And yes, steal. So and how much has he stolen? If you knew how much the enemy has stolen from you, your generation before you, and your generation before you, man, you you you'd be, you would have a righteous anger. God wants to get give that back because we have the right. We have that right. The scripture says when the enemy is caught, he must what restore it. How many times? Sevenfold. Sevenfold. I'm not going to sit there and allow my generation, me, another second, another second to go by where the enemy is holding goods that belongs to me and my family. That God wants to bless us with. And God has ordained for us to have. This is that generation. This is a generation of vindication. Come on, vindication. Come on, saints. Vindication. Glory to God. You've, you've stated how many times, right? We know for a fact when God, Jesus Christ, leaves the earth and he says, I'm coming back. Okay. We know Christ is returning. Not, this is not like possibly. No, no. Christ stated it's numerous times that he's returning. He's returning for a what wedding? A royal wedding. Come on. A royal wedding. Um, have anybody ever watched what goes on in London when they have a wedding? Those weddings, okay, first off, you know, they're using, you know, the royal blood. Okay, first off, nothing royal about it, okay? If there's two bloodlines, there's only two ways in this world. Let's leave it at that, okay? Mm -hmm. But let's just say, so you've seen those royal weddings in London, okay? There is not a penny that's spared. Everything, right, right. everything and anything that's necessary is beyond, and, and every part of it, from the horses to the meals to the people, it, everything is layers upon layers of stuff that we can't even comprehend, but these royals do it all, okay? And so when the king returns, this wedding is going to be better than anything that you've ever seen on TV. It's going to be Ooh. filled with anything. Why? Because the earth is by that point will be given back to the saints all of it because god's coming back to do what not to save you he's coming to redeem the earth he's coming to take it all back he already jesus already fulfilled he was already on this he was a final adam he took care of all that mm -hmm. so we can now stomp on the neck of serpents by the way of his blood, the name, Jesus Christ. So that's all done. He just got to come back and grab that earth and the royal wedding, bring heaven to earth, grab the earth and make it all the greatest place in the celestials mm, to live. Mm. Yes, it's yes. Be incredible that's how good. this is all that's good. coming together. God's laying the stage. And so before he returns, he's coming for a bride without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. His name will be spoken across the four corners of the earth, and that bride will have everything she needs. 
everything. Saints, he's not coming for a broken bride. That's right. A, a, a bride in fear. Uh, a, a God doesn't believe in spousal abuse, okay? <clears throat> <laughs> All right to God. You, 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 you go back in the days of Genesis when Eliezer was sent out by Abraham to find a bride for his son, Isaac. It's powerful. Abraham gave Just listen closely to Manny. That which has been will be again. New characters, new people, same story. That's right. And so this is our time. This is our generation. So I make it a point to study the scriptures because I want to know. I don't want to be off track. Continue the story about the wedding. We want to hear about the wedding. Continue that story. The wedding. It goes back into the time. Oh, I love it. Bo is interviewing me. I like it. <laughs> that Eliezer went out and Abraham get, sent him 10 camels of gold, silver, and precious jewelry and clothes. Everything. And Eliezer went to that place. You know, when he got there, he prayed, as many of us know. And the women that came out, one of them was, was Rebecca. She had no idea. But what did she do? She gave him water. She watered her, his camels. And guess what happened? That was the prayer. She's a servant. But Rebecca wasn't tired. She wasn't burned out. And there was a small, you know, an appetizer there, a diary. He he puts rings on her or, or on her or her wrist and, and, and her nose and 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 says, you know, you have a place to stay. He stayed. And then he tells the story. Rebecca's listening. Rebecca was not forced to be a part of this. She was listening. And and Ayla Asia, when she said, Yeah. I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to see this man, Isaac, which is a type of shadow at this particular time of Jesus, our bride. She hasn't saw him yet. She knows that she's going to see him. She, she hears about the wedding. She hears about all of this, but he prepares her. And before they get married, here's a wealth transfer. Before they get married, before she even sees Isaac, Ailey Asia loads the whole family with gifts and royalty, everything. God did this. That's for us now. That was understand. before she met Isaac. It's so important to Woo! understand that is the way it's supposed to be. That's the way it's yeah. done in Israel. In That's how God set it up. That's how it's set up. So before the wedding, the groom, I'm, thank you for doing that because actually I was with Jonathan Khan in Israel and he actually went through the steps of a, of, a, of a Hebrew wedding. And it's so true. What happens very specifically is the groom showers the bride-to-be with wealth before the wedding. He so, just dated it. So that's, God wants to do that now. So when Rebecca saw Isaac. Now, I don't know if the rabbi mentioned this, but it took about three months to go from where Abraham was to where Rebecca was and three months back. So there was a, there was, there was a time period before she saw Re before she saw Isaac. But when she saw Isaac, she already was full of her veil. She was looking nice. She had all that jewelry that was given to her when she met Isaac. That's you and I. We are the bride of Christ. God doesn't want us looking like somebody just came out of a hole. <laughs> you know, he, we're going to look good. So, so you need to receive the inheritance that God has for you on earth. And the inheritance he has for you waiting in heaven. Woo! When evil comes onto this earth, okay, evil will be knocked down. 
they're going to go into hiding. They're going to flee. Many will be destroyed and killed by the hand of God. This is going to be historic how this is about to play out. And when they, when again, we cannot stop Revelation. So you can't stop the things that are written in Revelation. And you're also not stopping the return of Christ. Okay. All of this is going to happen. And when it does happen, again, back to the start of our presentation, you know, which side of the fence are you sitting on? Arthur Pawlowski's, you know, prophecy, when God shook that fence, people were on the left or the right side, but there is no one done, there is no one left sitting on that fence. Mm. So God is going to shake that fence. And because why? We're not stopping anything. He's just making a way for his bride. He's That's going right. to intervene upon evil and make a way for his bride. That's the whole point of glory days. Thank glory you. days are God's going to make a way for his bride. He's the way maker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, all of those things. He's going to make a way. And so when evil returns to power in the future, they're going to rise up again. Yeah, you know, because basically it talks about in Revelation 13, I think it states, but maybe I'm wrong on the not on the number, but but it talks about the mortal wound. The mortal wound, mortal means death. So the beast system, the mystery Babylon system, the beast system you're watching right now gets a mortal wound. Which means what? What does mortal mean? Dead. So the beast is about to be killed. And we're going to have glory days. days. Just making it simple to understand. It's not complicated. When evil is destroyed with a mortal wound, its glory and glory appears, thus leading into, gives the, gives the mortal wound, and then you've got glory days. Because when glory manifests, you got glory days. And that's just the simplicity of what's going to happen. But you're not stopping revelation. Read further. It says the mortal wound is what? Healed. So there is your resurrection of evil. So mm -hmm. evil is going to resurrect, come back to life in the future. You're not stopping anything. And that, therefore, you need Christ to come back and that he's going to destroy, literally destroy evil and take back the earth. But when evil rises again, this is a prophetic word also in relation to the wealth transfer we've been talking about. When they rise again, remember Proverbs 13, 22, the wealth of the sinner, the evil ones is stored up for who? The church, the righteous, right? So who gets, so the wealth transfer that Mandy and I speak about is going to happen and evil gets stripped of all of their finances. Mm, mm. So when evil returns, guess what they don't have? Mm. They don't have Haggai 2 verse 8. I promise you that. They are not going, evil comes back to power. Oh, all they're going to have is digital because they will not have the silver and the gold. They are mine, saith the Lord. So in the time of your enemies, in this time, your enemies will lose everything they hold dear. In the coming tribulation, everything they had will have been handed over to the church, my mm -hmm. children. There is your wealth transfer. So they lose everything. They come back to power with digital. That's all they got. They will not have any gold. They will not have any silver. And the bride will have anything and everything it needs. Silver and gold will be priced beyond measure. The value of it is going to be astronomical. So you will be able to get whatever you need in preparation for the days ahead. Period. Mm -hmm. There will be no lack because in a kingdom, in a godly kingdom, there is no mm -hmm. lack. lack. Very simple. It's all scriptural. Well, how can they get a hold of you? 
website <clears throat> my website is gold 2020 forecast.com and you can also put my name in on youtube and watch some uh, recent videos as well too so exciting times saints the good news is the bad news didn't work out for the wicked and the enemy has a plot God has a plan, always has a plan. I encourage you, I so encourage you, stand, stand, stand. Know that he is God. Things are gonna be taking place. As Brother Bo was speaking about the gold, the silver, the wealth transfer, about the enemy, you know, you see, the enemy has plans for God's people, but God has plans against the enemy. And it's always God's plans that stands. It always stands, no matter what. God's plan stands. And you can connect with Bo, uh, go2020forecast.com. I believe that's the right one. We all come together in agreement. Some say the cup is half empty or is half full. But at the end of the day, it's we're all saying what God is saying. I saw some things. I saw a lot of open doors on that mountain. Doors that the enemy was trying to shut. I'm going back in 10 days. In 10 days. I'm going to go back because I feel there's an urgency with, especially with these wonderful holy holidays and Monday. Wow. So if you haven't sent in your photos, send them in. If you haven't sent in your photos, send those photos in, please. There are it, nothing's too large. Nothing's too small. I am believing God for your miracles and breakthroughs. And I, the anointing and the presence and the, I felt on that mountain, those mountains today, I, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. I was in tears, presence of God, as I was just speaking over your prayer request, saints. God loves you so much. We care about you. Brother Bo cares about you. We care about you. We care about your needs. And so I thank you. Don't hesitate. Go to that mailbox today. Go to the mail and mail in. If you haven't done it, go and mail it in today. When I get back, I, I, I'm going to be uh, on the cruise with Donna uh, event for seven days. And I'm going to come back. And when I get back, I'm going to go. That's, that's my, that's my, um, you know, I, I have an assignment. I'm going back to the mountain and send your prayer. Believe me, God is answering prayers. And I know we're going to hear a ton of testimonies. We're going to hear a ton of testimonies of breakthroughs. Because every prayer. I've been saved, Brother Bo, for almost 30 years. Every time I've been to the mountain, I have not seen not one prayer request unanswered. And I was drawn. And so, and God has put it on your heart to be a partner with our ministry every month. Thank you, because we are feeding the homeless. We are doing it. And it's getting towards that end of the month where we're going to go out personally and feed the homeless. And I need to know those that want to be a part of that. I personally go out and, you know, we're going to try to bring some of our team with us. And we are going, and it's a big kitchen. It's a big kitchen. And we're feeding, we're feeding them because, you know, they know about us. And so they like to meet, they want to meet me, a lot of those. And they're thanking me. And I said, don't thank me. Thank the saints for partnering with us every month 
to be a blessing that you will not have to be on the streets that you will not have to sleep in your car that you will have clothes and that you will have the gospel not just people their families kids women and children are getting homes are getting shelters because you saints are partnering up with our ministry so sign up every month every week you're doing a good thing and god knows what you're doing i want to saints. add this man yes, i want to add this this is important about sowing seed i my wife and i've been doing this for a long time but it's important to sow seed i want to tell you why very simple look in the scriptures this example when jesus fed the five thousand it wouldn't have happened if the boy didn't show up with the two fish and the five loaves of bread. It was that seed that multiplied. Wow. Wow. You, you know, God gives seed to the soil. You sow on good ground. <clears throat> I'm going to hear those words. You're going to hear those words. Well done. We, me and my wife and our ministry, we walk in the fear of the Lord. We love the Lord so much. We walk in the fear of the Lord because no one day we're going to hear those words. Well done. And the human need is, imp is important to the Lord to help those that are in need. You have bread. When I was hungry, you fed me. Yeah. When I was naked, you clothed me. You're doing that. So I'm asking you again, that if God would touch your heart to partner with our ministry and help us to get the gospel out, help us and partner with us to sow into the work of the kingdom. I didn't tell Bo to say that. He, that was the Lord leading him. He Lord remembers you. He really does. All right, saints. Send in those prayer requests. As I say on the one, I send to all. Watch and pray. Live holy every day. These are glory days. Come on, somebody go out there and get some fish tacos and celebrate. If you didn't have your glory day hats, you better get it. Get it because celebrations are upon us. Hallelujah. We love you all. We'll see you later, saints. God bless you.